Hello friends, I usually make puppet shows, but uh, this one is just a sharing the knowledge kind of video, so here we go. Hello Sigma FP community, and I guess any camera users who need stabilization. I filmed some footages with Sigma FP and stabilized with Gyroflow and posted on social media and some people ask, how did you, how did you do it? And I thought I can share my process and maybe some people can benefit from that. So if you use Sigma FP, you probably have problem with the shaky footage just like this. And you probably did uh, some research, that's how you found this video. If you use Gyroflow, you can, you can use this software, open source software that's free and you can make your footage stabilized. So Gyroflow software, it needs two things in order to stabilize your footage. One is your footage, that's easy to get. And the second thing, that's the second part, you need the motion data. That's a little tricky to get because your camera don't provide motion data. Sony camera, Panasonic, or like any camera that has stabilization function, I think they they will export the motion data, but Sigma FP, such a lovely camera, it does not. To, to get the motion data with your footage, you do need to attach an external device that has the capability to record the motion data or gyro data. But there's three ways. One is smartphone or GoPro like action cameras. That can do it. I didn't know what I didn't want to go with that route because that is just kind of big. I'm using microcontroller. So this device, I was looking for the information on online on Reddit. Adrian Eddy, I think that's his name. He mentioned about this Atom S3. This is from M5 Stack. M5 Stack, that's the company, and Atom S3 is the device name. This has the gyro sensor, and he said, get this and uh, download this program and install it in this. The program is written by Vladimir P1. If you go on GitHub, you can find his program. It's called ESP Gyro Logger. ESP Gyro Logger. It's difficult for me to say because I'm Japanese and it has like an R and L sound. Anyway, so ESP Gyro Logger. Uh, you need to install it in microcontroller. So attach the microcontroller. Then it knows which direction it's facing while you're filming it. Now before you start, you start recording both of them at the same time. Now it's recording. And I like marking it like doing this so that it, it has that, uh, the gyro data and the footage will have the mark. So it's easier to synchronize later on in the post. That you, you'll be able to see it after we install those data in, in the program. So now, now you did the marking and then you take footage. You mark it at the end as well. That will make your life easier. Now you stop the recording. This device will send out the Wi-Fi signal. Wi-Fi signal. ESP Great Land. You go to the bra a browser and go to this address. Ooh, you can't see it. Oh, no, now you can see it. Then you can see what's stored inside of this device. So genius, Vladimir, so genius. And you click the file, the last file, because that's what I want to use. So that's the gyro data I just downloaded into the computer. Hi, Pepper. <laughs> Finally, we're using Gyroflow. Just to give you like overall idea of this. So left side is all the data you put in footage, gyro data. On the right side, all of this is how you cook it. And then you export it. Uh, okay, let's drop the video data. 7 MP4, I named it 7 because it's the seventh video that I had. I'm gonna drop it in here, okay? It's in there, 
that's the footage that I took. And then before you do anything, you want to find the lens calibration data. That's well, lens profile data. That's pretty important. I used 35 millimeter lens. This is rangefinder Canon 35 millimeter lens. I try usually try to find Sigma FP file. These are the data that people just putting it in into this community, right? So that these data will be in there because it's an open source software. So everybody's contributing it. But anyway, so Sigma FP, let's find the 35 millimeter F2. That sounds perfect because that lens is also F2. Let's use that. Yeah, mine is not the FD lens. Mine is LTM, but it does not matter. So click that. And here is the, Here's the spot that you drop your uh, gyro data, but don't do that yet. This is where I made a mistake. It's better you just auto sync it beforehand. Auto sync. Now, this is the guess of the program. The guesstimates. Look at this green line. That's the bow that I made. Like tilt that I said. Bowing, I, I actually did this, so. Now we put a actual data in there. That is the gyro data. That is, that came from that footage. So I'm gonna drop it in. Now it's in there. As you can tell, it's wonderfully matching. The shape is matching, but the timing is not matching. Even though I clicked it at the same time, it doesn't matter. So what, how to make it synchronize is you control click this, control click it, and add manual sync point here. Here we go. You see the how many milliseconds it's offset? Well, magically, I just know that it's a negative 600 and it matched perfectly because I tried it already. You just need to tinker. Here we go, now it's matching. But one problem is, you know, before it's blue and green. So that means the axis are not matching. It should be green and green. That's where this IMU orientation comes in. The order of these axis letters, X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. You should watch somebody else's video for this because I am really struggling to explain this part. Uh, I, as you can see on my camera, the gyro recording device is because this device should be like, this should be the straight on, but I am uh, turned this way and also it's turned this way. Now all the axes are completely mixed up. I did a lot of experimentation and I know that the orientations are capital Y, tiny Z and big X. Now it's green and green, right? Oh, and, and, and the negative 600. See, once you tinker it, it's easy. Now everything is matching. And it already did all the smoothing and such, but if you watch it, it looks crazy, crazy. Like you can't even see the footage. It's, it's off. Yeah, it's, it's pretty off. The reason is you know this bowing moment? It's really extreme, right, doing this. So down 90 degree and then up 90 degree. Then when you try to smooth it out, I'm my, this is my guess, the program is trying to make the average of that movement, right? All the direction, you're just getting the average of it. So you can't even catch up because it's doing the crazy move. So just ignore that, that part, you never use that footage anyway, so. Ignore that area. This will be your footage. Focus on this part. This is where I made mistake. I was trying to make this part perfect because it's more obvious the you know crazy moves. So I thought I can make this part well. Then this part will be better. No, ignore those two. Ignore that. All right. If you look at it, you can change the smoothness you know, more, like higher it gets, it becomes more like gimbal and F or V, so it will zoom in a little bit. 
you see the center area has no more red warning sign here yeah now all in the frame you are not gonna see this outside of the frame that's what it means here we go the part you need is all no red no red no red you see how smooth that is my arms are never smooth like that no way my skill set is terrible and this video looks very smooth out i will export this and combine it with the original one so you can see how it's done oh to export it you just click export super easy so i hope you can use gyroflow and and sigma fp combined together with with this unit i i I'm hoping more people will try this so that, you know, Vladimir will be so hyped up, you know, this, this is his made. I think he made this for drones though. But hey, we, we get to use it. I think that's really cool. Oh, by the way, I, I, I make a puppet show filmed with Sigma FP. So if, if you guys don't mind clicking the link down, down in the description, I'll, I'll be so happy. Anyway, thank you for watching. Bye.